The purpose of this short video is to fully define the word table when we are talking about computer systems. So let's get started. A simple definition of table is a set of facts or figures displayed in an organized way, especially in columns and rows. So that would look something like this. As you can see, the rows are horizontal and the columns are vertical, like the columns of a building, you might say. In a moment, we'll get into how columns and rows work together in a table. Let's finish thoroughly defining the word table first because it's important you have 100% certainty on what this word means. If you're wondering why this would be called a table, this early definition might help. This one is from Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Table, a tablet, a surface on which anything is written or engraved. Example. The Ten Commandments were written on two tables of stone. As you can see from the definition, early tables were flat, board-like objects upon which people would actually do their writing. Here are some pictures of early tables. Looking at the derivation, we see the word table goes back to around the 1100s and comes from an old English word tabule, which meant flat slab, inscribed tablet, which was from a Latin word tabula, meaning plank, tablet, list. Today's tables are of course quite different, but one can see where there are some similarities if we look. Let's dive into today's row and column tables a bit now. You might be thinking, rows and columns? This is sounding a bit like a spreadsheet. Exactly! There are some slight technical differences between spreadsheets and tables, but we won't get into that right now. Both could be called tables, though. Let's take a look at how tables are used in the real world using a very, very simple form like you might see on a website somewhere. Here's a simple form which collects name and email address. So we see that there are only two fields in the form. There is a name and an email. Now let's fill out that form with some simple data. When you put information into a field like that, you're entering what are called values. So great, now we have gathered some information into our small form. Now what? We need to save or store that information so we can use it for a later purpose. When information is submitted through a form, it gets saved or stored in what's called a database, a term you have probably heard before. But what is a database? It's just a bunch of tables. So let's see how exactly the data would get inserted into one single table, because understanding this little detail will greatly assist you in understanding the big picture of where all this data goes. When the database was set up originally, each column was given specific names corresponding to the names of the data being stored, in this case, name and email. So you can see here the name and email field names correspond to the column names for the table where the data is about to be stored. Now that the data has a place to be stored, the values themselves can be inserted into the table, and the values would be shown as a row in that table, as you can see here. Now that row contains the values we wanted to store right there in the table. That is really the simplicity of it. Field names in the form are the column names, and the values go into rows 
inside the table. Okay, so that's the definition of a table, how it works with a form and what that has to do with the database. There are a couple of additional quick points to make, but first, if you are at all foggy on this, I recommend you stop here and go back through what we have covered so far. It is important you don't go further before feeling very good about what we have reviewed thus far regarding what a table is and how it can be used to store data values. Okay, back to the previous image. Now that you're feeling great about what a table is, there are a couple of other simple but important ideas we should include here after covering how the data is stored. The first one is that every table has a name. The name indicates what kind of information exists in the table. Let's call this one we've been talking about contacts. The name of the table gives you a hint as to what might be in it. We'll touch on this a bit more after we cover the next idea. The next idea is that each row gets an identifier or ID number, usually assigned by the database automatically at the time the values are inserted into the table. We're showing a second row here just to illustrate that each row would have its own unique ID. This is important for many reasons, but one main one is to allow the other tables in the database to refer to each other without having to duplicate the same data in other tables. This keeps the database very clean because the same types of data, for example, contacts, sales, employees, etc., are not being repeated over and over again throughout the database. So that's tables. You should now feel pretty confident that you know what a table is, how it relates to a form, and how multiple tables make up this thing called a database.